All right, so in this video, we'll be taking a look at the Selenium IDE. This is a very slick Mozilla Firefox extension that allows you to very quickly, rapidly automate web testing, uh, web scraping, or uh, web automation more generally. And if you've looked at previous videos on this channel, we've done this in Python. We've used the Selenium Python package to do this for us. We've seen how we can automatically log into websites and scrape some of the content from that. And what's really neat about this extension is that you can just download this, run it. This is a screenshot of it here on the website that uh, is the main website for this particular program. And what's really cool is you can record actions that you do in your browser. It will uh, remember those actions and then it will play them back for you. So you can just automatically do something and have it remember what you did. And you can use that as a test case if you're testing a website or if you're just lazy like me and want to automate certain things. It's a very neat, ni nice little tool that doesn't really require any uh, direct programming knowledge. Now, that's not to say that I recommend using this without any programming knowledge. I'd, I'd recommend using, um, you know, I'd recommend approaching this from a programming perspective. And also uh, another option that's really neat in this is that you can extract a test that you might do just from recording actions and you can download it as Java, as Python, as whatever. Really cool. So a lot of this is kind of vague and not very specific if you don't actually see it in action. So let's actually take a look at what this thing can do. And if you want more information about Selenium IDE, I'll direct you to this website here. I'll leave this link in the description to this video. Indeed, all of the links that I'll be mentioning in this video will be in the description as well. So if you want to look at the documentation, what else is possible, uh, I'll leave that to you. But we'll be taking a look at just a very simple Hello World-ish uh, thing that we can do with Selenium IDE. So as I mentioned, it's a Firefox add-on. So right now, you can probably tell I'm in Chrome. And one of the downsides of this uh, IDE add-on is that it's only compatible with Firefox versions 17 to 34. And at the time of this recording, Firefox is currently on version 55. So we're going to need to download a previous version of Firefox in order to make use of this very nice little IDE. So the nice thing about Firefox is that it has an FTP site which hosts all of its previous uh, versions of Firefox. And all we need to do is find the version that we care about, which in this case, again, uh, I'll be downloading 34. So I'll look for 34, here it is, click on that. And then I'm gonna click on the link that corresponds to the operating system that I happen to be on. And I happen to be on Linux x86-64. You can probably tell that I've already gone through this since the links uh, are highlighted here in, in purple. So, and then I'm gonna click on the appropriate uh, location. So I'm English US, I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to be presented with this tar, or you might be presented with a zip if you're on Windows, for instance. Just download this, and uh, I've already gone ahead and downloaded it. So I'm going to open up my downloads folder, and there it is. I've actually already unzipped it as well, just to save a little bit of time. So if you open up that folder once you've unzipped it, you'll be presented with all this stuff. And actually, if you just click on this Firefox icon right here, which isn't really obvious based on the way it's uh, showing up in my viewer, if you double click on that, you will have the Firefox browser pop open. And this is the um, Firefox browser version 34. So we're ready to go. Now all we need to do is install this add-on in Firefox. So I'm just gonna search for Selenium IDE here. Uh, click on the first link. We already saw this link as well. Uh, and then I'm gonna add this to Firefox. So I'm just going to click install now. It's going to require a restart for Firefox. And if you see this little icon in the top right of Firefox, you're good to go. You've got it installed. So I'm just going to click on that and it's going to present me with uh, pretty much what we saw on the initial page, which was a screenshot of this IDE. And so it was really cool. I'm just going to kind of show you an example because uh, I think it's best to actually see how it works and then maybe describe kind of what's going on afterwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit this red record button. I'm going to make sure that it's on. You can tell that by uh, sort of the area around the gray circle is depressed. It's slightly darker gray. So now the Selenium IDE is recording. What is it recording? It's going to record the actions that I'm going to do in the Firefox browser. So notice this table here is currently empty. Just keep an eye on that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to my browser here. I'm just going to arbitrarily go to some website let's say youtube.com. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for Captain Hampton. 
why Captain Hampton? It's the first thing that popped into my mind. It happens to be my other channel of guitar videos. There's me and my beard. Um, if you like guitar, feel free to check it out. <laughs> it, it's the first thing that popped into my mind. So um, anyway, there it is. So let's go back to Selenium now. So now it has some stuff in there. So we see that now this table that was previously on previously empty now has some content. What is this content? Well, it's basically a step-by-step -step list of things that Firefox just did. And in fact, if we want, we can start from the beginning and hit this play button. And we can see that it's actually going to take part in the action that we just did. So exactly the steps that we took place, navigate to youtube.com. In fact, let me just go back here. You can slow that down a little bit. And if you hit play again, you can see that it's going to open up youtube.com, search for Captain Hampton, and click on that link, and there it is. There's my channel. There's my beard again. Let me just put that over there. All right, so we have this. That's kind of neat. And what's really cool about this is that if we wanted to, we could even just say something like this. We can say file, save test case as. So why is it called test case? Well, like I mentioned, Selenium IDE is kind of a web testing framework. Let's say you have a website. You want to check whether or not you can log in given certain usernames and passwords, these sorts of things, you can build a whole testing suite uh, that allows you to run all of these things and see if there's certain things that are broken on your website or whatever. You can also, also use this for automation uh, as well. So it's really, you know, the possibilities are limitless. Anyway, so let me say file and let's say export test case as. So what's really cool is the thing that we just did here can be exported, sorry, let me do this again, file export test case as, and we can export it as any one of these languages. So let me say Python unit test web driver. So I'm just gonna uh, export this to my, uh, let's say my desktop, I'm just gonna call it uh, youtube.py, let's just call it that. And if I go to my desktop now, let's go to my desktop, there it is. Let me open this up with Sublime. Put this over here and check that out. It's a whole uh, pretty much automatically written code that does exactly what the test case did uh, that we just saw. So if you've seen my other videos on Selenium, a lot of this probably looks familiar. Uh, importing WebDriver. There's some other things that might look a little bit more complicated, but really there's not a whole lot going on here. Uh, really the meat of what's happening in this automatically generated script is right here in this test. So for every unit test that we create, there's going to be a new function and the functionality of that test is going to be found in here. So just very briefly, kind of what's going on is that there's a driver object that's being created. We're telling Selenium to open the URL that happens to be uh, the base URL, which is defined up here as a class variable. And then we're just appending on this, which was the search query that we entered, entered which is Captain Hampton. Uh, and then basically what it's doing is it's finding an element by something, in this case, the ID. So it's looking on the page. In fact, if we go back to, uh, let's say this point here, and if we type, if we right click on this thing and we say inspect element, uh, let's see, do we see, let me do a control F for what is the name of this thing? Go back to here. This is called MAS head. So let me go back to the browser again, wrong window. Let me find MAST head, see if that's anywhere. Uh, let's see, that doesn't appear to be anywhere. Let's check the debugger. Uh, let's see, is that anywhere here? Oh, yep, yeah, sorry, I had to pause the video. I found it, I just right clicked on the search bar, oddly enough, which is exactly what we entered in content to. Inspect element and you can see that the ID is this thing here, MAS head search term, and that is exactly what is looked for in this uh, line here. They're searching for this uh, thing by the ID of the string. They're clearing anything that might be in there, so they're just making sure that it's an empty search bar, and then they're sending uh, a specific thing to that search box, in this case, the string Captain Hampton. Then they're just clicking on it, uh, and they're specifically clicking the Captain Hampton link. So that is this thing right here. They're clicking a link that has the name Captain Hampton, and then they're basically just uh, doing something else here, which I'm not exactly sure what this is doing, looking for some CSS stuff. But what's really cool is that if you just build this, if you just run this script here, it does exactly what we saw. So right now I'm in Sublime, I just ran that, it's doing exactly what we just saw, and it quit. So there's a line, I think right here, which automatically quits. So it just killed the browser. But if I comment that line out, run it again, uh, we can have the browser kind of stay open for a second so we can see it actually did what it was supposed to. 
goes to Captain Hampton, looks at that, there's my beard again, and I'll close it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and you can you know, kind of see some of the possibilities that you can use with the Selenium IDE. It's a really neat extension. It's kind of a shame that it's not available for the current version of Firefox. Uh, if it is, let me know. Um, and then in future, future videos, what we'll do is we'll see how we can do some pretty neat tricks with this thing and uh, uh, some of the more advanced features that we haven't really tapped into this video. So if this is helpful to you, let me know. If you have any comments, uh, suggestions, or anything else, please let me know in the comments. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.